Sterile regulatory element binding proteins are transcription factors that bind to the sterile regulatory element DNA sequenced CACUNCUC. Mammalian SREBPs are encoded by the genes SREBF1 and SREBF2. SREBPs belong to the basic helix loop helix leucine zipper class of transcription factors. Unactivated SREBPs are attached to the nuclear envelope and endoplasmic reticular membranes. In cells with low levels of sterols, SREBPs are cleaved to a water-soluble N-terminal domain that is translocated to the nucleus. These activated SREBPs then bind to specific sterol regulatory element DNA sequences, thus upregulating the synthesis of enzymes involved in sterol biosynthesis. Sterols in turn inhibit the cleavage of SREBPs and therefore synthesis of additional sterols is reduced through a negative feedback loop. Isoforms, mammalian genomes have two separate SREBP genes, SREBP1 expression produces two different isoforms, SREBP1A and minus 1C. These isoforms differ in their first exons owing to the use of different transcriptional start sites for the SREBP1 gene. SREBP1C was also identified in rats as ADD1. SREBP1C is responsible for regulating the genes required for de novo lipogenesis. SREBP2 regulates the genes of cholesterol metabolism. Function SREB proteins are indirectly required for cholesterol biosynthesis and for uptake and fatty acid biosynthesis. These proteins work with asymmetric sterile regulatory element. SREBPs have a structure similar to E-box binding helix loop helix proteins. However, in contrast to E-box binding HLH proteins, an arginine residue is replaced with tyrosine making them capable of recognizing stas and thereby regulating membrane biosynthesis. Mechanism of action Animal cells maintain proper levels of intracellular lipids under widely varying circumstances. For example, when cellular cholesterol levels fall below the level needed, the cell makes more of the enzymes necessary to make cholesterol. A principal step in this response is to make more of the mRNA transcripts that direct the synthesis of these enzymes. Conversely, when there is enough cholesterol around, the cell stops making those mRNAs and the level of the enzymes falls. As a result, the cell quits making cholesterol once it has enough. A notable feature of this regulatory feedback machinery was first observed for the SREBP pathway, regulated in tramembrane proteolysis. Subsequently, RIP was found to be used in almost all organisms from bacteria to human beings and regulates a wide range of processes ranging from development to neurodegeneration. A feature of the SREBP pathway is the proteolytic release of a membrane-bound transcription factor. SREBP proteolytic cleavage frees it to move through the cytoplasm to the nucleus. Once in the nucleus, SREBP can bind to specific DNA sequences that are found in the control regions of the genes that encode enzymes needed to make lipids. This binding to DNA leads to the increased transcription of the target genes. The 120K DAR SREBP precursor protein is anchored in the membranes of the endoplasmic reticulum and nuclear envelope by virtue of two membrane spanning helices in the middle of the protein. The precursor has a hairpin orientation in the membrane, so that both the amino terminal transcription factor domain and the COOH terminal regulatory domain face the cytoplasm. The two membrane spanning helices are separated by a loop of about 30 amino acids that lies in the lumen of the ER. Two separate, site specific proteolytic cleavages are necessary for release of the transcriptionally active amino terminal domain. These cleavages are carried out by two distinct proteases, called site 1 protease and site 2 protease. In addition to S1P and S2P, the regulated release of transcriptionally active SREBP requires the cholesterol-sensing protein SREBP cleavage activating protein, which forms a complex with SREBP owing to interaction between their respective carboxy terminal domains. SCAP, in turn, can bind reversibly with another ear resident membrane protein, INSIG. In the presence of sterols, which bind to INSIG and SCAP, INSIG and SCAP also bind one another. 
INSIG always stays in the ER membrane and thus the SREBPSCAP complex remains in the ear when SCAP is bound to INSIG. When sterile levels are low, INSIG and SCAP no longer bind. Then, SCAP undergoes a conformational change that exposes a portion of the protein that signals it to be included as cargo in the COPII vesicles that move from the ear to the Golgi apparatus. In these vesicles, SCAP, dragging SREBP along with it, is transported to the Golgi. The regulation of SREBP cleavage employs a notable feature of eukaryotic cells, subcellular compartmentalization defined by intracellular membranes, to ensure that cleavage occurs only when needed. Once in the Golgi apparatus, the SREBP-SCAP complex encounters active S1P-S1P cleaves SREBP at site 1, cutting it into two halves. Because each half still has a membrane-spanning helix, each remains bound in the membrane. The newly generated amino terminal half of SREBP then goes on to be cleaved at site 2 that lies within its membrane-spanning helix. This is the work of S2P, an unusual metal oprotease. This releases the cytoplasmic portion of SREBP, which then travels to the nucleus where it activates transcription of target genes. Regulation, insulin, cholesterol derivatives, T3 and other endogenous molecules have been demonstrated to regulate the SREBP1C expression, particularly in rodents. Serial deletion and mutation assays reveal that both SREBP and Alexa response elements are involved in SREBP1C transcription regulation mediated by insulin and cholesterol derivatives. Pyroxen proliferation activated receptor alpha agonists enhance the activity of the SREBP1C promoter via a DIA1 element at minus 453 in the human promoter. PPARI plus or minus agonists act in cooperation with Alexa or insulin to induce lipogenesis. A medium rich in branch chain amino acids stimulates expression of the SREBP1C gene via the mTORC 1 per second 6K1 pathway. The phosphorylation of S6K1 was increased in the liver of obese DBDB mice. Furthermore, Depletion of hepatic S6K1 in DBDB mice with the use of an adenovirus vector encoding S6K1 char RNA resulted in downregulation of SREBP1C gene expression in the liver as well as a reduced hepatic triglyceride content and serum triglyceride concentration. mTORC1 activation is not sufficient to stimulate hepatic SREBP1C in the absence of ACT signaling revealing the existence of an additional downstream pathway also required for this induction which is proposed to involve mTORC1 independent act mediated suppression of INSIG2 a, a liver specific transcript encoding the SREBP1C inhibitor INSIG2. FGF21 has been shown to repress the transcription of sterile regulatory element binding protein 1C. Overexpression of FGF21 ameliorated the upregulation of SREBP1C in fatty acid synthase in HAPG2 cells elicited by FFA's treatment. Moreover, FGF21 could inhibit the transcriptional levels of the key genes involved in processing and nuclear translocation of SREBP1C, and decrease the protein amount of mature SREBP1C. Unexpectedly, Overexpression of SREBP1C in HAPG2 cells could also inhibit the endogenous FGF21 transcription by reducing FGF21 promoter activity. SREBP1C has also been shown to upregulate in a tissue specific manner the expression of PGC1 alpha expression in brown adipose tissue. NIR 77 is suggested to inhibit LXA and downstream SREBP1C expression modulating hepatic lipid metabolism. History, the SREBPs were elucidated in the laboratory of Nobel laureates Michael Brown and Joseph Goldstein at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas. Their first publication on this subject appeared in October 1993. References External links, Sterile Regulatory Element Binding Proteins at the U.S. National Library of Medicine Medical Subject Headings, The Brown and Goldstein Lab Cholesterol synthesis, has some good regulatory details, protein database, sterile regulatory element binding 1A structure.